What's up guys, how's it going? Welcome to Bailey Boys Banter. This is our new podcast, this is my dad. Hey. Um, t- it's really chill around here, we're just going to be low-key, talk about things that are going on in the world, and um, not not a whole lot of yelling and stuff like you see in the vlogs all the time, just down-to-earth talking about stuff, so I'm excited. Yeah, this is great, a great format to talk about the, the things of the day, and to just visit and share ideas and I like this format just like the vlogs are more like quick and stuff and like fast paced and here you can just sit down talk and eventually we're gonna have guests too um I'm hoping to get I already have a few people that want to come on but I don't know it's exciting yeah and we'll probably mess around with uh, format and that sort of thing a little bit it'll take a little experimentation to get exactly what we want yeah, we got our poster back here, Bailey's Beats, <laughs> has her name. We'll, well, maybe in the future make it look more, I don't know. This is just our first podcast, we're getting used to it. Um, yeah. But I'm excited, I've been looking forward to do this for a while. Yeah. Um, I think this is something that a lot of people don't do, it's like father, son. Yeah. It's usually like two friends or something. Um, right, so. and there's a lot of value with multi-generational, because we can both learn things from one another and yeah gain a lot respect. of different viewerships and stuff yeah that's you, right um, well I um, Silas I don't know how all these things work I don't understand the technology of a lot of this but um, how will people be able to see and or hear this podcast so at first this is just going to be on YouTube um, where I think eventually if we get more viewers um, we'll put it on Spotify and iTunes and stuff so they can listen but for right now we'll just have it on YouTube nice so we'll have the audio and the video yeah so it'd be nice to have some feedback from folks about yeah comment down below like um, things we can do if the audio is weird or the video different settings yeah you won't hurt our feelings if you know we want to get better at this so yeah. just let it out you know yeah Yeah. let us know so okay let's dive in there's a lot going on in the world. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, it's a very interesting time, you know? Um, Corona-19, COVID-19, um, protests going on. There's a lot of stuff, so... Let's start with let's start with school opening up. Okay. Um, so as of right now, there's a choice, at least in Indiana, where we live, um, to go back to school or do online. Um, I'm doing the online version. Do you think going back to school is a good idea right now? Well, health-wise, maybe not, but I understand it's more complicated. Like, there are some children who might not eat breakfast if they don't get to eat breakfast at our schools or they, whatever, they won't be able to get um, a therapy session or something. Schools provide a lot of services, so... yeah. Seems that like a complicated thing. I can see why there's pressure about that, but you I, know, I feel like they'll be pretty safe about it. Like, they're gonna have desks moved apart, and like in the hallway, there's gonna be lines and stuff. Yeah. But still, I don't know. if one person gets it, they have to close it down. <laughs> yeah. So. I mean, it just doesn't sound like a super great social situation anyway. Because I hear you'll have to walk on certain sides of the hallway with spacing and it sounds a little bit like um, the military was for me you know, yeah. in some ways and um, do you think how I mean do you think some children will go to school in person the whole semester without stoppage or do you think it's almost a for sure thing there'll be a stop my guess is give it two or three weeks <laughs> gosh yeah I mean I think yeah I think there's going to be problems because if anyone or anyone just related to anyone that goes there yeah. gets it, they don't have to go there. They have to shut it all down. So, I mean, it seems li- likely to me that's already the case. I mean, it could there's be already, the first day. half day. <laughs> yeah, really. It yeah. could be. I mean, because the mo- somebody will report it. And so, and then, I mean, pr- I'm thinking that maybe like yourself, Silas, everybody who's already signed up online and all set away, their schedule set in that way, will have a slight advantage. I mean, yeah. they'll already know what's going on and that, stuff. 
That's why I think it's good to do online first try. Yeah. I didn't want to at first. I was like, I'm yeah. see my friends and stuff, but yeah, yeah it's smart probably, because yeah, they're gonna shut it down. I think. Well, hopefully you can have friends over. And oh yeah, I'll still see my closest friends, and they may go back and forth for the real real life in school, because yeah. like they shut it down and no one has it again, so they go back. And <laughs> Yeah. I don't know. It's going to be interesting. Well, did I, um, maybe one of our viewers or listeners can elaborate on this, but I thought I read that the IPS is already um, not starting, that they're uh, Indi- Indianapolis Public Schools, uh-huh. um, which I assume is the biggest school system in the state or one of the biggest. Yes. They're not um, starting? Well, I think they might be just delaying it by a couple weeks. Um, Maybe Washington Town. I don't know. There's a number of different school systems that are already lined up to to not. No, I hope they don't cancel school for the second trimester because I'm a swimmer. I don't know if you guys didn't know. Um, and then my season would be canceled, which would be. <laughs> yeah, your senior year. Uh, which my senior year, which wouldn't be good, but that's what I'm hope. I'm hoping that it comes back after like a month or two. Well, as of now, I think the um, fall sports are happening. Yeah. Yeah. In some fashion. Just no crowd? I don't know. I'm not sure. I think that's what I heard. Yeah. Yeah, well, it'll all be tricky. Uh, kind of reminds me, though, about, um, not to get too sappy here, but it, the importance of um, family. You know, fa- it, it, these things, these big world events like this always com- comes back to family and yeah. I'm thankful your mom's going to be able to help support you guys. Yeah. A lot early on. I'll and be working. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And we've been getting a lot done during this quarantine. <laughs> yeah. We've, the room we're in right now, we built. <laughs> yeah. Which is pretty nice. Um, we worked on a van, built a bed in the back. Um, what else did we do? Those are the main ones. Yeah. Um, well, we're playing around in real estate a little bit, looking for a possible investment property. Um, Rental or to flip. Um, I took a college course that maybe oh, could yeah. be an outlet for Silas at some point. If if high school's not too hot, <laughs> maybe yeah. Silas just jumps right to college. I don't know. Yeah. I'm looking to be a realtor, I think. Uh-huh. Or something in real estate, flipping houses or something. And it's a great great spot to do that in yeah well, almost every spot is pretty decent yeah. for that but real estate hardly ever goes down yeah and money which is nice um sports they've they've now opened they've opened the NBA right I wasn't sure about Have that they? they've opened the MLB yeah I think they've opened it actually they're just, just don't they're getting ready or they're, something they're close don't. There's something about like having each season holder having a cam um, attached to their actual seat so they can watch their own team <laughs> from the exact perspective they're used to. That's so weird. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they're doing that in baseball, right? Not about the cameras. They're doing it with cardboard cutouts. <laughs> <laughs> it's even worse. It's what kind do you of mean? Fun. Just like of their face? Well, it's more like their torso. Um, so probably a lot of um, younger uh, viewers and listeners don't know of Chipper Jones, but he played for the Braves about 20 years. He's been retired like 10. Well, he, he was sort of an arch enemy of the New York Mets, and he um, paid for a big, big cutout of his big smiling I saw kind that. of like trolling head I saw the, that. at the Mets stadium. And like the Mets can't really do anything about it and so oh, that's a savage move right there. <laughs> yeah i heard about that uh, so all those mets players have to sit there staring at him at all so the- anyone can do it if I, you have money i think i'm not sure maybe it's just the season oh. ticket holders i'm not sure no. i was gonna say if anyone could we should like buy one yeah that'd be fun and can you get other could you put like big bird's face or <laughs> like weird stuff oh i didn't think of that might be trademark. You could choose any image. <laughs> you could yeah. do some very interesting things. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. <laughs> Mr. Bean or something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, 
time. So. Yeah, that's yeah. weird to me. Just that whole thing with no crowd. And, yeah. Um, now, Wrigley Field in Chicago is a little different because th- there's all the um, rooftop seating across Sheffield Avenue or um, I think I guess both roads that go around the back of the stadium have forever Wrigley Field is built in like 1914 or something it's really old yeah and the so those are private places that have been selling spots for people to watch games from there Mm -hmm. so now I believe there are going to be actual people are able to go there. Maybe it's reduced capacity, but I'm guessing those people are making a killing, making a ton of money selling tickets f- to be on their roof. Oh, oh, that could be a good real estate investment. <laughs> <laughs> Buy yeah. some close to that. Huh? I don't know about that. Yeah. Dang. Yeah, the whole economy is kind of switching around a little. Um. Yeah, what else should we talk about? Let's see. About? Seattle protests. I don't know a whole lot about those. I don't either. I mean, I'm guessing it's the Black Lives Matter thing. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I know they stormed and, and held control of the police station. At least one police really? station completely they took over the protesters. Dang. I don't know how you do that exactly yeah. without just getting hit by tasers and rubber bullets and there's just a whole bunch of them they just flooded into I, I guess I don't know how they did it um, now of course most of those folks just end up getting arrested and thrown in jail for a couple of days or a week but now we went to a few two protests just one or was it two well I've been to I, I don't know we went to one big one yeah um, and that was it was peaceful we just marched down to the courthouse and that was pretty cool. Yeah. Seeing all the people there and stuff. You know, I'll, I'll say, uh, you know, I'm sure there's exceptions here. We're in Bloomington, Indiana, but overall, the Bloomington Police Department, I thought, has done a fabulous job because for that big march, some of the officers marched with us in uniform. Yeah. They were just totally supportive. But otherwise, mostly the police stayed away. They backed off and because sometimes a police, you know, police show up with horses and riot gear, that adds, you know, fuel to that fire. And yeah. So. So the fact that they were just marching peacefully and not. Yeah, and then there were some weird. patrol cars around, like helping with traffic and stuff. But the, the our police department mostly wasn't, stay out. wasn't confrontational or anything. Yeah. Yeah. Now we did. Uh, a few all don't know. We did have a. Uh, protest or run over by um, a car I heard about sent that. to the hospital so they're good now right there. I think so yeah yeah and now there aren't there armed armed people walking in this protest yeah how do you feel about that I, I don't know it's it's a difficult situation because they're just protecting the protesters I don't know I think I think I like it I think they're not going to do anything unless someone else um, comes and tries to harm them. And they're all with the protesters and stuff. So I think it probably makes people feel more safe. Do you think that or not? Well, yes and no. I guess I feel like um, it probably does feel make the protesters feel more safe. But I guess overall I feel like they actually are less safe. I mean, this is the liberal me speaking here like I generally think guns make situations less safe even if they're intended to be for good or whatever things happen because I was trying to think like what if some people came by and fired a couple rounds at the Black Lives Matter folks what are these guys going to do are they going to return fire with people out on the sidewalks and other cars around And because that's not good either well so, I mean, if they don't have guns, then they're just going to get away. Yeah. I don't know. At least in Bloomington, I kind of would have preferred if the police department... So I talked, yeah, to, I talked to one of those guys, and he was like... He told, he told me that the Bloomington Police Department gave them permission to be there mm-hmm. and gave them a two-block radius. And I 
I just kind of feel, I, I told him in a nice way, I said, well, I kind of feel like maybe having the trained and, and a, more, a little bit more accountable police force there. So these are just random dudes? With... Well, they're, they have a security company, so they, uh-huh. they've passed various clearances. They're not just random guys, okay. and, and their intentions are good and everything, mm-hmm. but um, it made me uneasy. I got a picture of a small child that walked up to one of them with his automatic weapon, and the kid was asking him about his gun, and I thought, you know, if there wasn't um, issues with posting pictures of children <laughs> without permission, I, I would have posted it because I thought it was really a meaningful photograph I took. Yeah, you think that's like causing the child to like think guns are like something to like play around with? Or? Maybe, maybe yeah. it's possible that it's also just possibly desensitizing a little bit. Like they yeah. might kind of grow up like expecting that sort of thing. And, um, I think it's good to have. I think they can be like make you more safe in some cases. Mm-hmm. Like just have it. If you have it in your house, just in case there's a robber or something, I think, I don't know, or just like a baseball bat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what um, I tend to agree with. Well, I I definitely feel for particularly um, like a single woman in you okay. know Chicago sure. or something. I understand that yeah. a lot more than I do somebody in suburbia, uh, Bloomington, Indiana. Yeah, but, no, for sure. So. So. There's different situations and stuff, but... Yeah. Um, yeah. It's complicated. I always just get kind of uneasy with guns. Have you ever been around guns? Yeah. yeah. I just... Uh, well, I was in the Army, but I mean, other than that, a couple times in my life, I've, you know, people... I've seen a couple people with a handgun in their door spot yeah. in their car, and I thought, oh, yeah. you're driving around with a gun right there? Like, what's... Really? <laughs> Why? Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of people that do. I mean, it's weird that people you wouldn't think that have guns. And then, but, um, but no, I, f- I feel like a lot of people just, it makes them feel more safe. Just to have, Especially if it's a single woman and stuff. Yeah, I do kind of get that more. But I think the statistics would probably say that they're often less safe particularly really? households with children because yeah. quite a few children die from gun gunshot, accidental gunshot. Well, that's why I think you'd have to keep it like locked away from children like in some safe or something to well, only use it if you have to. That's a... Yeah, that's what they say, but then I don't get how it really protects you in a home invasion then. Like... They usually say keep your ammo locked here and your gun locked mm-hmm. over here. Like if somebody's in your house, you're not gonna have. I feel like you're not gonna have time to be unlocking different things, loading ammunition. And well, I think you should have the ammo and the gun in the safe. And then yikes! <laughs> oh, in the safe. In the safe. Yeah. Okay. And just never take it out unless, unless in your room, like next to your bed or something, and just keep it in there in case there is a robbery. They just make me nervous. I don't know. Like, it just to think that somebody can basically press a button and take somebody's life, it seems a little bit too easy for that, you know. I mean, you can, sort of like a knife, though. I mean, if you have a knife, you can just stab them. And yeah. They could die sometimes if you do it right. That's true. Um, but yeah, it is. Well, when have you seen guns? Um, a friend of mine has one. Uh huh. Um, they were showing it to you, or? Yeah. But it was an all safe environment and stuff. Uh-huh. Um, yeah. It's just for hunting mostly, I think. Yeah. And then, I don't know, hunting's a different story. Um, I, yeah. know you're, I know you're a vegan, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I just, no, yeah, so none of it really makes any sense to me. I mean, yeah. I, I, I don't really relate with guns really much at all. But. This is why I think this is going to be a good podcast. Yeah, yeah. Like, sort of different sides to things. Yeah, you're Which, probably more reasonable. <laughs> I'm a little bit cuckoo. <laughs> a little bit more out there. But there'll be people that are on your side. And there'll be people on my sure. side that's 
I, I like that sort of thing. Like, a, some you can not argue, but just talk about. Like, a, yeah, I mean, it's got to be a safe space. We got to be able to s- yeah. disagree yeah. And, and not be on the same page sometimes. So. Yeah, no, for sure. Yeah. Um. Okay. What else we got? <laughs> There's a lot. Of we kind of have a menu. Here. We, have, we have a little list here of things. <laughs> um, let's see. Knobstone Trail. We were thinking about hiking that, right? Yeah. So, Silas, I um, I don't know if I said it quite like this to you before, but I had a bucket list going into this summer. Yeah. That's all that's left. Really? Yeah. So, give the view. What is the Knobstone Trail? Okay. Exactly? So, the Knobstone Trail is the longest hiking path in Indiana. And it's about 60 miles. Okay. And it is in five segments. It's kind of south central Indiana. Um, and for folks that don't live in Indiana, particularly southern Indiana, uh, Indiana is not just flat cornfields. There are chunks of it that are, but it gets pretty quite hilly. Yeah. And knobby. That's where the knobs don't come from. And, um, so I would just like to do a section this summer. It would be a day hike. It's you know, I wouldn't. It's not a huge. How long are the sections roughly? The shortest one's five miles. The longest is thirteen. Okay. But I'm forty four. <laughs> yeah. You know, a so what a shorter mile, section? Maybe maybe yeah. eight or ten at the most, especially okay. since it's been in the nineties temperature wise. Yeah. It's been super hot the last few days. Yeah. I, like outside and stuff, I was sweating. Oh, sweating yeah. a whole bunch. Yeah, we should be growing banana trees or something. Actually, <laughs> probably could. Yeah, probably could. Um, yeah, so you enter it, would you want to maybe do? Yeah. It would mean like driving for an hour and a half, dropping off a car, driving to the other end of the trailhead, parking. And then hiking to the first car, and then driving back to get the second. Uh-huh. So we need a driver. Well, probably. Yeah. Yeah. But I have friends that would like to do that. Do yeah. Some hike. Anyway, it's beautiful. If uh, anybody who's never been on it or heard about it, look into it a little bit. It's quite rugged. Don't underestimate it. Do not think, oh, it's only eight miles or something. Um, yeah, I've never been there, so I have no idea. But yeah, I'd love to go there. So we'd bring like backpacks and snacks and water. And stuff. Yeah, mostly just a lot of water, but some oh. snacks. And, I mean, really, yeah. like normally hiking, say eight miles, would only take a couple hours. But I, th- some of the views are really beautiful. Stop and, and you take want to stop breaks. and it, it'd be yeah. an all day thing to drive down there and hike and drive back. I want to do one of those things where they drop you off in the helicopter. Oh. The survival. Outward bound. Outward bound. Yeah. Yeah. They basically just drop you off in a helicopter for what, a few days? They have different programs, but yeah, usually. And then they give you a certain amount of supplies and you just have to survive off that. That would be fun. I don't know much about it. I've heard it's like a Ziploc bag of like sunflower seeds and matches. and You know, like it's very limited. Maybe a piece of plastic for, I don't know. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, no, I love, especially with a friend or something. That would be yeah. Like more fun. Yeah. I don't, I don't know if I could do. I mean, I, I'd have to. Yeah. Yeah. I love that kind of thing, though. Just do or die. Like, <laughs> you sort of have to survive, or else. You mean no cell phone? No cell. So, yeah. <laughs> no Clash of Clans or YouTube. <laughs> Netflix. <laughs> yeah, Netflix. That's yeah. Fun. Well. Yeah, but what if you had an emergency? What if you broke a leg and... Then I'll have to... <laughs> survive. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'll have to... I don't know. Maybe if I'm by myself, that's a different story. Maybe you have a backup safety plan. Like, if I'm not at this point in three days, then something's gone yeah, wrong. Yeah, if I have snacks, I could survive three. Well, it depends where, where it'd be. Because if they're like bears or something. That would be a different story. Well, I have... I mean, Outward Bound's weirdly quite expensive. I guess it's partly the helicopter or whatever. But mm-hmm. um, my cousin that lives in Atlanta did it. Oh. Um, but, uh, I mean, you could do it not officially through Outward Bound in 
the Hoosier National Forest. Go just walk out there. Yeah, I mean, blindfold myself, spin in circles. <laughs> I don't know about that. Well, that's true. I guess you'd have some sense of north and south if you were in a drive a little bit. But... No, that'd still be good, though. I think with a few friends, that could be a lot of fun. Like, you have different tasks you have to do and stuff. Um, or how about how about this? Is you have two teams, so you have two teams of three people or, or something, say, and they're both trying to cover, say, uh, it's pretty hilly there, say, just twenty miles in three days. And then there's like a point system. You could have a big reward or something, money or something, and say like whichever team gets to this fire tower first or whatever. That could be a good YouTube video. Yeah. <laughs> oh, then you would have your phone, I guess. Uh, some sort of way where you wouldn't. I don't know. Yeah. Camera. I don't know. Yeah. That's no, the kind of that. stuff you could maybe do with all this online learning. It's possible you have things come up where, like, you're done with everything by Wednesday evening. You're know, like, what am I going to do <laughs> Thursday and Friday or whatever? Yeah. You know? I want to do something like that. Yeah. While I'm still in high school and stuff. Yeah. That sounds fun. Yeah. So what is this you wrote here? You wrote testosterone versus estrogen? My handwriting's not very good. It says test a store. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. My There's not even a phone. Okay. Okay, then you want me to go into that? You want to hear yeah, that? what is that? Well, I was just thinking about diet, and I, okay. um, I mean, I think about diet a lot, but um, I've been a little bit interested in the idea, at least for me, that um, the prob- sometimes the problem with being vegan or vegetarian is that you're um, consuming a higher um, amount of, like, particularly soy products, and generally soy is pretty healthy I mean in its true form it's it's, it's a bean it's yeah. um, but it's also high in estrogen which is basically the female hormone or, mm-hmm. well female is not the right word but the um, it's the more f- female form so the more so what you eat the more female you are. well or more estrogen you get. It's not really proven. It's yeah. like it's like that's kind of a kind of a little bit of a fringe theory is that some people are eating like so much soy and estrogen high foods that they actually right that that's the theory is they don't they're not going to change genders or anything but they're yeah. going to be a little bit more leaning towards having some characteristics. Um, I've heard about men developing um, like their breasts a little bit more from, you know, I'm talking about decades of... Or being whatever. vegan? Yeah. Or just eating a lot of soy? And it's not even soy. I don't even know. There's other foods that are higher in estrogen. And then there's huh. some foods that are higher in testosterone. So I was thinking I might want to research that this week and try to... I'm going to be vegan, but I want to try to get um, maybe higher testosterone. Do you know what kinds of foods that is, or...? Well, I think what's going to pop up is me, Yeah. but um, for me, I don't want to, um, I don't want to consume meat, and so I, I think there'll be other plant-based forms of testosterone, but I don't really know. Do you know anything about this? I, no, I, I haven't heard about that. I mean, I would have guessed meat would have more testosterone, but no, I'm going I'm to research that some, too. I don't know that soy had more. Hey, here's a wild but, idea. What about... If you're eating um, like red meat, does it depend on what the gender of the cow that you ate? Not that we know that, but if you were eating a male cow, would you have more testosterone in that meat? And if you ate a female cow, would you have a little bit higher estrogen in the meat you were eating? <laughs> I mean, yeah, right. It kind of seems that way. If I've got this right, I, I don't really know. Yeah, if the female cow is. Just- Cows have estrogen and testosterone, right? Sure. Yeah, they have to. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, I guess. <laughs> so then it huh. kind of becomes more complicated. Can you order, like, male hamburgers? <laughs> <laughs> Can I have a male hamburger? Somehow that seems sexist to me, but I don't, I don't know that it is. I, I'm not sure. 
Or well, can I have a female hamburger? I think a lot of female cows get shuffled into the dairy industry. Yeah. Yeah. So probably mostly what we're eating is male cows. But I don't know what happens to a female cow when they age out. They stop producing milk. Are they then turned into hamburger? Or yeah, I, I don't know about that. Yeah, I don't either. <laughs> Something to think about. That Let's could be a it. thing in the future, like male or female hamburgers. Oh, yeah. So we're men, you and I, so we're thinking about testosterone a little bit, but could a woman possibly prefer... I mean, it's interesting. Could a woman possibly prefer to have more testosterone or more estrogen? Do they want to be a little bit yeah, more well, feminine? Or? That gets into the... Yeah, they, for sure. It's, it's 2020, you know? <laughs> There's Yeah. And if, I guess the female cow could pr- meat would probably cost a little bit more because then you're taking a cow away from the dairy farmer, whereas the male cow has no function to the animal industry other than being eaten. Yeah. What yeah. are we talking about? <laughs> this is interesting. You know, so it reminds me of that question you're talking about where is a whole a noun? <laughs> Comment down below. Because he thinks a whole isn't a noun. All right. <laughs> Here, here's my brief. Well, let's list. hear it and I'll give you mine. Of course, by most people's definition, I, can, I mean, if you look in a dictionary and you look up whole as in H O L E, yeah. it's going to say noun. We view it as a thing. But I was trying to make the point that a whole. Like, if you have a hole in the wall, the, the whole part is actually the lack of something. It means it's some, there's nothing there. That's the definition of a hole. So I've decided that I want to call a, the word hole an anti-noun, because a noun is a person, place, or thing, and a hole is a not thing. It's an anti-thing, so I'm calling it anti-noun. Can I say my part? Now? Yeah, yeah. So if there's a hole, can you go into the hole? Yes. So a noun is a person, place, or thing. So if you can go into it, then it makes it a place, right? I uh, could, but okay. What if it's in um, space? Oh, yeah. So like, what if you have a crater on the moon, and, and it's like a hole, say the crater's, you know, and you stand in it or whatever, or put say you put a marble in it. That space in that crater, we can call that a hole, but it's not exactly. It's also a um, vacuum. There's nothing in the hole. There's no air. Here, if you have a hole in the wall, there's a mixture of gases. There's oxygen, nitrogen, argon. Yeah, yeah. But in space, but it's still a place you can go to. Even if there isn't anything inside of it. I guess, yeah, right? A hole is it's still... If you can make the argument that you're in a place, then maybe. Well, space is a place. Even... Well, is it? <laughs> I mean, isn't space, by definition, the lack of a, spa- of a place? Space is what's between two things. What we call outer space is an absolute void. It's a complete, perfect vacuum. There's absolutely nothing in it. Then how can we go into space? (laughs) (laughs) Do we actually go into space, or is that? Oh, is that all? (laughs) That's a whole other conversation. (laughs) Yeah. Have we been to the moon? I mean, you never know. Well, have you been to the moon? Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) No. No. So, how do you know that? The moon even exists. I see it in the sky. You think the moon doesn't exist? I, I, no, I thought you were argue that we haven't been to the moon. <laughs> I, you think the moon doesn't exist? I'm, I'm, I think the moon exists, but I'm saying, how do you? I'm trying to think through the logic of this. Like, how? Why do you think the moon exists? Because of movies and pictures and everything. You've never walked on the moon. You've never actually touched the moon. So what's the thing in the sky that I see? 
well, I don't believe this, but I'm trying to say, like, somebody could say yeah. it's a projection of light or it's a, a oh, big this is all like a stimulation. Right. Like, there's a lot of different ways you could. That would be crazy. I mean, it begs the question what things that you can't see do you believe? Well, I can see the moon. Yeah. But, like, other things. Like... Or experience, I should almost say. What things can you experience? Well, yeah, I mean, like, unicorns? No. Um, yeah. Well, no, I think the moon, the moon is real, and I think we've been there. I do, too. But, I do, too. Yeah, I don't know. That's a good question. I mean, it's true. We Generally, as people, we believe in lots of things that are very abstract. That, you know, I, obviously, the obvious example is God. For younger children, though, they, they've got a whole slew. It's dragons and Santa Claus and Easter Bunny, and there's a whole list of of characters <laughs> yeah. that they might believe, but they've never seen. Yeah, I mean, you have a point. I don't know if I want to get too deep into the whole God thing. We could, <laughs> no, no. <laughs> there, could be, there could be some people. That, yeah, um, yeah. But yeah, I mean that begs the question. I mean, what what that you haven't seen, do you believe in, and why? And there's a lot of people that believe a lot of things out there, and a lot of them probably aren't true. A lot of them probably maybe are true. So, I think it's a li- probably a little bit on just personality. Some personalities are able to think like we have a spirit and different things like that some personalities are more concrete they need to be able to see or touch something to believe in yeah I mean I think the more open minded people can see or believe in spirits and stuff or whatever you believe in um, do you, do, have you ever believed in anything like um, sort of mind bending sort of things like do you, do you believe a person could bend a spoon mm-hmm. by just looking at it with I didn't was it Einstein that said we only use like what was it thirteen? <laughs> was it? I, I forget read, the percentage, but I've read before that the theory was that he used about thirteen percent, and most of us are functioning around seven or eight percent. Think about what we could. Yeah. What is that even? <laughs> I feel like if we use all our brain, we could like heal ourselves instantly. Yeah. Like I feel like that could be that's something in our control. Like if our things move faster and stuff. Yeah. I don't know about moving other things, though, because they're not connected to you at all. Like, how... Like, how would I move that wall without touching it? Well, I don't know if the theory is that you're kind of bending the space around it, but I don't know why that would work. Well, I think using more of our brain would just be, like, stuff in our capability. Like, we could run faster, or we could heal ourselves, or, like... um, jump higher and stuff yeah but I don't know if we could change things around us with our brain yeah there's people that really believe that we could that we could actually it's like the I force mean, in Star Wars that we could literally make something lift up and move over without touching it that, that would be awesome <laughs> I mean, it could cause some problems too <laughs> maybe yeah <laughs> yeah but yeah that'd be awesome maybe I'm just the only one that could do well, right. Maybe you need to crack some sort of way into getting in deeper into your brain. Yeah. I think it's why some people do um, hallucinogens. So, like, I know people who will do, um, you know, mushrooms. And they're, they're not trying to be, like, have a trip and be, like, wild or, like, meth. It's more like they'll, they'll consume the mushrooms and they'll philosophize. They'll stay up real late and they'll just think, think try to think deeply and try to, they're trying to crack through that barrier that's blocking us. Yeah, who knows? It could be just eating something weird that opens up the yeah. certain thing in your mind that you're just like, whoa, Yeah. I can heal myself instantly. Yeah. I just got to tell my red blood cells to move faster <laughs> right um, well how about is it okay if we keep going with this topic sure. it's somewhat related I mean there's also this theory that's gaining a little more traction that we are not 
um, basically a free thinking species that mm-hmm. um, you know like I think it's been proven that we're like maybe eight pounds of us roughly is just bacteria straight bacteria and if you look at the ways bacteria influence their environments like in our stomach but also we have bacteria in our brain or in our spinal column but we also have all these hormones and chemicals in our body it's kind of sad in a way but the the idea is that possibly we're not making these decisions exactly just from our own free will we're actually just a bundle of chemicals that are reacting to our environment (laughs) you believe what do you think of that okay I'm going to touch that tea I did nothing told me to but I did or was it the bacteria? Well, right. So you think even my mind, like what I'm thinking, isn't... Well, I'm not saying I think yeah, this, but... Yes. Um, yeah. Right. Huh. That even, even doing that is just the product of this conversation, which is the product of the evolution of our thoughts. And so, and really we're all living, we're confined because nobody's willing to challenge those limits of our brain. How would you challenge that? Though? You don't know. No. I'm clearly yeah. not there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Some people are more closer than others, but yeah, yeah, that's something to think. I, you know, for me personally, it usually I get I feel closest when I'm out in nature. Like yeah. I like to like hike up a mountain or walk. For, I need to walk more than a mile or two. I get like I need to go five miles or more, and I kind of get in this trance my brain starts to work differently and that's where my best thoughts come so you gotta hike to the top of a mountain eat some mushrooms (laughs) and then you can use more of your brain (laughs) don't take drugs (laughs) oh yeah we're not condoning that yeah I I don't I I probably won't ever do mushrooms (laughs) yeah gosh we're getting kind of heavy here this is a yeah we've talked about some interesting things I mean if this is the kind of things you want us to talk about, go for it. Um, you know what? So you can make sure that your brain's not just being controlled by bacteria. you got to just do something weird sometimes. Just go... <laughs> <laughs> just do, like, weird yeah. things to kind of try to break, like, or at least buckle the matrix. Well, that's just what they're telling you to do. Oh, gosh. <laughs> yeah. Right. That, that's not your choice. Yeah, you know, this is a lot, this is millions of years, hundreds of millions of years of evolution. Are we really making these choices completely just free will? That is so weird to think about. <laughs> yeah. Everything. We're a, li- we're a little sweaty right now. We probably need to get a drink soon. It's hot in here. Yeah. It's hot in here. This is all just part of our environment. We're not really going to choose to get a drink. The environment's forcing us to get a drink. What if I choose not to get a drink? You'll die. <laughs> no. uh-huh. And then you're selected out. You know, you have no offspring, Silas, so your DNA uh-huh. would be selected out. Yeah. Gosh, I never thought about it like that. It's like almost like our DNA. Natural selection. Yeah, but it's like our nat- natural selection is selecting for like normalcy. And really, natural selection, I wish, was selecting for unnormal thought. For outside of the box thinking yeah (laughs) that's weird to think about you know like the you think about like the weird kind of hermit kind of loner guys that never fall in love with anybody never get married some of those guys are probably brilliant but their DNA won't continue because as a society we just think oh that guy's weird and they never have children and so mm. that DNA is just lost in that way. And that's natural selection, sort of. Yeah, it's all... In a way. It's possible we're... Well, we tell ourselves we're getting smarter as people. We're learning collectively more. Collectively. But as individuals, I don't know that we're that much smarter than people were 100 years ago. We know we, more. I'm talking... There's a difference between intelligence and wisdom. And we have access to more? Yeah. I guess we made we gave ourselves access to more. If you think about it. Um, I mean, it's possible that 
our internet age could actually make us less smart in the sense that we're not doing as much critical thinking. We're mostly just Googling things and looking up what other people say. Yeah. We're not just like turning off our devices and just free thinking about what it is that we need to work on. Do you remember the movie Wally? Yeah, yeah. It's like they had all this fancy technology and like humans didn't have to do anything. Yeah. They just sit on their chair that floats around, drink the shake that gives them all their nutrients, watch TV, and then they're all fat and stuff. Yeah. And the earth was a mess. That's pretty deep, actually. It is. <laughs> that, actually, that movie is scary. It is. I think it's a scary movie. It's a kid's movie. And then they're just like, yeah. Yeah. That is a scary movie. It's a good point of reference. Well, you think it's time to wrap it up? Sure. I, I think, think probably so. so. If you guys like this setup and tell give us feedback, good or bad. We want to know so we can make a better, better experience for you guys. I'm excited to have guests on mm-hmm. and more just talking about weird things. Yeah, we, we, <laughs> we barely touched the tip of those topics. So. Yeah. We talk about some interesting things. <laughs> yeah. um, but drop a like, subscribe. Um, hope you guys liked it. Anything else to say? Well, think outside the box. Don't let your bacteria control you. <laughs> Don't let your bacteria control you. Okay. All right. Thanks, guys. See ya. Thanks for watching. Peace.